from 1959, directed by Stanley Kramer and number 147 in the imprint range comes this wonderful on the beach set of a movie that is, <laughs> there's no other way to say it, remarkably downbeat. This story here is basically about a nuclear war has destroyed uh, the world. Uh, we follow a submarine as it surfaces and travels to Australia, which is the last continent with people who are alive. But these people are patiently waiting on the nuclear fallout to arrive and wipe them out. There's nothing they can do about it. Their time on this planet is limited. And although they may try and look for solutions, ultimately their end is coming and quicker than they know it. It's one of those great stories. We all know that from the moment we're born, we're going to die. These people actually have a time frame. They know it's coming. They know it's coming quickly. And we follow the captain of the submarine. We follow some people who live in Australia and deal with that, who are all tackling the impending apocalypse their own way. And this is a kind of melodrama. It really it digs into the people's psyche. You know, this isn't a, a post-apocalyptic dystopian future where everything is just running amok. This is one where it's just a case of it's happening. This is an extinction event. Humans soon will be no longer alive on this planet and that's all they have to do with it. All they have is the connections that they have with each other and the time, however fleeting it is, to spend with each other. Can you stay for a few days? If you've got room for me. I'd feel the heart if I didn't. And you get some wonderful performances, a great stoic performance from Gregory Peck as the ship captain. Uh, we get a wonderful, sort of vibrant performance from um, Eva Gardner as Moira, a woman who is quite happy to drink herself into a stupor to escape uh, the thoughts of the impending doom, but finds a connection with that captain. You get Anthony Perkins um, as a young naval officer and his wife who have a young child who, uh, looking after their child, know that they're never going to make it into childhood. They're never going to survive that long. They're going to have to do the most unspeakable of things. Supposing you get it first, what are you going to do then? Struggle on by yourself until you drop? Jenny might live for days and be sick and helpless in her crib with you dead on the floor beside her. Don't you see that? Don't you see it? And you even get um, Fred Astaire as a scientist who's kind of turned his back on what's happened and again is drinking himself into oblivion to escape how he really feels. This is a movie that's kind of haunting in the way it tackles its subject matter. Remember in Australia, we really focus on the characters and their impending doom and how that's affecting them psychologically, even though they're trying to put up a brave face for the world. When we follow the ship captain uh, on the submarine as we go back to America to check out various landmarks to see what's going on, we spend some time in San Francisco and it's eerie eerily quiet, unusual. We have a character just checking out the sites, looking for survivors. And it's rather solemn. This is a solemn movie. It's not an upbeat, joyous film. It's a, a warning of what could happen if we don't take action against these kind of weapons. A foreboding movie that seems steeped in reality and is haunting because of it. Now, this set is truly wonderful. So you get uh, the, the film on the beach with a great deal of extras as well in this one. So here we are in the disc for on the beach. We're going to go to the special features. You'll see there's an audio commentary by film scholar Adrian Martin. We have another commentary written by on the beach expert Dr. Philip Davy, read by actor Douglas Hansel. We have Kim Newman. On Apocalypse Cinema, which is 21 minutes 36, talking about the literature, how the times changed, how the apocalypse scenario changed and, and what drove it. It's really quite interesting. And get ready to get a list of movies to check out after this. Next up, we have No Safety Nets, Human Horror and On the Beach, video essay by Kat Ellinger. This is 24 minutes, 13 seconds long. Talks a lot about the themes of the movie and how it's terrifying even though it's a kind of sad, romantic movie at the same time. Next up, we've got Clothes to Die For, The Costumes of Ava Gardner, video essay uh, by costume historian 
Elisa Rose and this is 15 minutes 32 seconds talks a lot about um, the kind of what Eva Gardner wanted um, in regards to makeup and, and clothing and how it kind of went about quite interesting next we have an archival audio interview with actor Gregory Peck which is 24 minutes 46 seconds long and it's a kind of later in his career looking back being the only surviving member of the cast which is really uh, kind of fascinating and, and kind of fitting for this movie I suppose the big stars arrive in Melbourne original 1958 newsreel which is 1 minute 28 just about the stars and their impact uh, as they landed in Australia next up we have outtakes location footage and costume test um, which is 22 minutes 33 and it's exactly what it says there uh, just interesting takes of certain uh, scenes and of course of course location footage making on the beach the 8 millimeter amateur footage this is 9 minutes 18 it's a quirky different kind of extra as it's really done by um, someone who just happened to be there and wasn't intended for commercial kind of publication next up we have the original radio spots which um, are 9 minutes 53 seconds and really kind of uh, interesting to listen to we have the theatrical trailer which is 4 minutes 45 which has a kind of precursor about the um, global release and the uh, 18 country premiere of this before diving into the trailer we have Stanley Kramer's photo album um, which again just as what it is and you also get optional descriptive text we have Ava Gardner's wardrobe gallery which is 1 minutes 49 it's pictures as well we've got the original poster and lobby cards gallery which is more art for the movie and then we have the stills and behind the scenes gallery as well and that's it for the special features on the beach but you also get the 2013 documentary Fallout now the documentary is fantastic because it follows um, Neville Shute, the, the writer of the book, follows his life and career up to releasing the book, all his uh, airs and graces, how he lived his life, all the wonderful things he did, and then it kind of hands off to Stanley Kramer and his creation of the movie, and then we kind of go to the legacy of what happened after that, and it really does cover everything, and it's so insightful, it's so engaging, you get to spend time with uh, all these wonderful people talking about the film, the impact that it had, they are knowledgeable, they're related to the subjects that are talked about in the film, and it just is one of those really impactful uh, kind of docs and then of course we get this booklet as well which is basically just set pictures um, of the movie but it's just it's a great little addition Ava Gardner wardrobe tests it's just yeah yeah I, I thought this was a terrific package of a movie that really hit home it really did affect me really kind of left me feeling a little bit morose after it. It's not a cheerful, joyful movie. It's not a movie I'm going to throw on all the time, but when I do put it on, it's going to shake me to my core, I imagine, every time. I would love to know your thoughts of On The Beach. Um, I really want to know if you've seen it, what you thought about it. Of course, let me know in the comment box below where we're down there. Hit the like button because it helps the channel. There's more content up here if you want to see more of my stuff. And don't forget that in the description box are links to the Patreon, the membership programme, or manvfilm.com where you can help support me in your own way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.